make the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Welcome to the Jesse Peterson Show. Today we are having a bonds meeting. Uh, bond is Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny, rebuilding the black community by rebuilding the black man. Uh, in case you didn't tune in last week, this is a two-part series, so we'll pick it up from last week. That's why we had the same clothes on. And uh, so if you missed last week, call the studio and say, I'd like to see last week tape. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the Jesse Peterson Show, call us at the office, 213-759-3844. Uh, today we're talking about religion. I want to know, has religion fell in the black community or is the church failing? I, I forgot my question, but well, that's what we're dealing with. But before we get into that, I'm going to introduce my guests to you, allow them to introduce. We'll start from our far right. I'm Nona Grant. Frank Steiger. Debbie Spann. Malcolm Jones. Charlotte Jones. Jesse Walker. Okay, I want to ask you, sir. Has religion failed within the black community? As I look around, I see churches everywhere, and yet we are not overcoming. Has religion failed within the black From community? From what I've seen, yes. And how? Um, I think it's five basic laws that the Most High put down here for men to go by. And all religion adopted these laws, but here in the United States, uh, the Christians don't teach it the way we it's taught to us and those five most basic laws are your morals your principles your values your pride and your standards and when you don't have these laws no if the, if the religion if the, if, the, if the preachers or the leaders don't teach us this then we don't know it yeah. so I think that's where we fail we fail in that because the hooping and the hollering and the praying and the reading the Bible ain't gonna do any good until we get down to the basic laws okay thank you uh, I want to ask you, Jeff, you a question, if you could go to the mic. Right. Meanwhile, I want to ask uh, Frank, what do you, has religion failed? Uh, has your church failed within the black community? Uh, yes, Jesse. Um, I don't think religion has failed, I would say, uh, because religion is a personal belief, and one's personal understanding and his contact that he has with his Savior. Uh, now, as far as uh, the church conveying that to individuals to where they're able to cope with today's problems and and even yesterday's problem you know all you have to do is look around and see yes it is a failure uh, I've sat in many a church as I'm a member of a church uh, <laughs> now I won't say a church <coughs> the name uh, but I, I go and sit there and talk about being out of touch with reality uh, <laughs> way out of touch with reality. It doesn't teach you how to deal with everyday life, which, it, yeah. which should be the basis yeah. of all religion. Uh, there are so many unqualified people standing up there screaming and hollering and preaching. This is, this is one reason young people shy away from the church. Uh, this is one reason we have the big problem with the youth that we do have is because they're, they're drawn away from the church and not to it. They don't know how to pull the young people in like they should. You make an interesting point about young people in the church. But I want, uh, Jeff, you made a, a very interesting statement during break time. Can you say what you said before? Well, I think um, I was making a comment about guilt. Is right. that what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, about God, it, that most people know God, uh -huh. and it is the guilt that let us know that we know him, but it's a refusal to deal with the guilt. I think you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you know when when I guess there's a there's a moment there's a, there's a time when you you're experiencing God where you feel an inner joy a real inner joy, and then uh, when you do something wrong, you feel guilt, and a lot of people think that you know um, that God is not in their life, but He is still there. But now you're experiencing. Um, you're experiencing his, um, I guess, his wrath, you could call it, 
because you're doing something wrong, or his, his correction would be a better word. He's correcting you, and now you, you, you feel this, this guilt, and um, you get caught up in it, so you, don't really, you aren't really brought back into the joyous state that yeah. you were in before. And uh, you, you're running from, when you feel the guilt, when you have this guilt feeling, um, if you would not run away from your feeling, then you would get corrected, and you'd be right with God again. But instead, we go run into the world and find things to take away th this guilty feeling that we, that we have. And it's actually God pursuing us, still correcting us. It's, it's another okay. face. Good point. Um, another example, and then I'll, I'll give up the microphone. When, I, when, when, me and my, when my son is doing right, he's in my favor. Right. I said, well, you come in at, at 8 o'clock, all right? And he comes at 8 o'clock, then, hey, there's no problem. But if he doesn't come in at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. then i got to correct him. Well, his, his attitude toward me is going to change. But if he doesn't resent me, then he's going to see that I'm doing the right thing by him and that he's, you know, I'm trying to correct him and bring him back around. And it's the same thing when God corrects us. Yeah, so, so when we draw sin, that acknowledge it. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's a good point. I appreciate that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to ask Malcolm uh, what Frank said about young people don't go to church because they see that uh, the preachers... The hypocrisy. Are, are, is hypocrites, right? Yeah. Uh, is that the reason, or is it because they see that the parents are hypocrite first, and you sort of lose that desire for the church? You know, we most of our parents are uh, church going people. Church going for I won't say no <laughs> denominations, but yet uh, you know we see that in the home that they're not living the life that they speak about. So are we more affected by that first, or the church? I think with by the parent first. Yes. Uh, yeah, because uh, we go there. With her parents, I, I know. I remember my uh, going to church with my mother. She was a, a pretty decent lady, but I, in her earlier years, we were going to church, and she would tell me to uh, to be still to in church. You know, not to move around, to to act nice. Okay, if I were to move around, she would just reach over and give me a pinch, and I, I always remember that because <laughs> because I I said. Now this lady, she's, she, she's, she, get, she pinched me and not hit me because she can pinch me without other people seeing her right. do it. Okay? <laughs> now she, she had this face of being really pleasant and godlike and all this. And, 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 but she was pinching me. I can just look at her and I said, that witch. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> I can look at her and, 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 and I can see it. I can see the hypocrisy there. And then, mm -hmm. but, I, but I see everybody else acting the same way as her. So I knew that they had that same identity that she had. She had that, had that same undercutting uh, being principle. Being sneaky, right. exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm. You know, yeah, oh, we could get a backhand real what quick. What your mother was doing, sparing the rod, like the word tells her to. That is a phase of sparing the rod. Until you get home. You have to know the word. And then they let go. Going no, the, the, the co correction. That still is a phase of sparing the no, rod, darling. No, co correction, correction is correct, okay? She, I, I, I agree right. with the correction. But I don't agree with the, the way the correction took place. If, if she's going to correct me, you correct me, and you don't care if somebody else sees. As long as it's right. See the correction. Uh, if I make it up in church, she can correct me right there in church. That's that's perfectly fine. But don't correct me in such a way just to pinch me. And and she's not. She has a straight face. And then when we get home, she's going to uh, take out a branch off the tree or something like that's that. What she's supposed to do. Okay. Let me hear from you. Uh, yes, I have a question I would like to ask. Uh, if religion has failed the black community, then then who's the fault? Who's to blame? That's a good question. The, the community I, itself the, is, is the, at fault. The, the right. parents, the the um, the ministers, the the adults are really at fault. They want to blame the children, and the, the children are not in church, and the children are running around, and the and the children are killing, and the children, but. Who brought those children into the world? Who let those children go? Who didn't discipline those children? Who didn't teach those children about uh, Jesus and his principles and, and God? I tend to think that it's more the father's fault. A and the reason is, uh, because of the understanding that I'm getting now, but when I think of, um, and I keep referring back to Jeff family because right now he's the only one I know that got a halfway decent family. His sons, <laughs> his sons are very young but they're not going through the same conflicts and, and they're not confused about religion. And they're not looking to someone else to guide them until they're able to find God for themselves. 
and they see they're pretty normal kids. You know what I'm saying? They they smart. They they speak up. They they have a lot of common sense. So I see. I I I want to believe that is the father's fault. Thank you. <laughs> <That's what Yeah. laughs> do you have to say about that, Norma? No, I'm just looking, looking at you. Do you, you disagree with that? Uh, yes. And, and <laughs> what, what do you disagree on that? About? You are judging his family and all this sort of thing, and talking about their being smart and and all of this, which I'm sure all those things are good and they are positive. But if you want to start back talking about what you are uh, categorizing religion as and talking about Christianity, uh, you can't, let me see, how am I trying to say? You can't uh, go, Generalize. all of these are natural things. All of these are natural things. And you know, in knowing about Christianity and religion, you, go, you have to know the natural, the carnal, and above all, the spiritual. They, I mean, there's a I foundation. All of this is very broad. It, 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 so it, it's you not can't say that this is a good family. What is a good family? And and he seems to be on the right track. It calls for more things than these, and these are really categorized as natural things. If you're going to speak in terms of Christianity and religion, you know. Because it seems like everyone see, he's not the only family. So I know people. I understand. Are going. <laughs> I understand yes, that too. There are others too, but I'm still order, saying, but. whoever those families are, you're still talking about natural things. Yeah, there are more like things to It looks like you're throwing a lot of stuff the into the pot and we can't just, yeah, we can't digest it all. But, but it's, 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 ba it's basically simple. I can see in my own life that I, uh, I believe in God. I, I, I fear God, but I haven't learned to love God yet. I have a conscience. I'm glad, glad the conscience is with me, but I don't always listen to the conscience. When I go against it, things Things just go haywire. Things you, go. You know, things people go think wrong. they're saying something great when they say, "I believe in God." Satan believed in God. Satan saw God. Exactly. Let me, let me hear. But, but, we, but <laughs> so that's no big thing. Saying I you like believe to. in God, that's no biggie. I wasn't and I saying it was a big to thing. The topics about has we're talking about how the church fails. So cool these emotions. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Has the church or religion uh, failed the black community? And I think if we think from the standpoint, well, black babies, beautiful black babies are born all the time. And what happens to those children? By the time they, you know, from the, from the mother's womb to the time that they're out in the streets, uh, making the streets unlivable. And where, what, what part, what role has the church played? One of the things that I see and that I found in church is you're constantly so emotional that oh. you can't realize the beautiful things that are being said. If you, if I'm so happy right now, or if I'm so angry right now, those are two forms of emotion. I miss the message. I'm not in my most aware state so that I can take in and understand. So. I think the church is one of the main ways that they fail. They emotionalize us out of our common sense and our ability to recognize what is true, what is real. And if we look at black people today, we are angry and many times we don't understand what is really help and what isn't help. Okay. Right. Uh, she said that very well. Sure. Jesse, yeah, you coach the I have sir. one question. Okay. Jesse, I want to know why you blame the father for that's the that's failure of the black church, because I heard you say that a minute ago. I, that's my well, question. Well, I, I didn't blame the father for it. The question was asked, uh, who was responsible, I believe, for the children, the church, of, and I said the father was. Right. I think that what, what people don't realize, there's an order of things, a natural order of things. Uh, the man, which should be the father, the, the husband, the father, is responsible for the spirituality of the kids. He should have a, a moral relationship with God. He should love those principles and live by those principles. And in him living by those principles, God lives through him. And that, and that light that lives through him, the kids just sort of see it, and they walk by that same light until they're able to grow up to you know, connect with him for themselves. And so because of the natural order of things, when that fails, then we began to fall away from those we fall away from grace. We fall away from God, and that's when the world come in, and that's how come we're being set up, or the churches, or you know, some of the churches, or whoever take over, 
and they continue to lead us the wrong way. But if we had that proper father that followed the order of God, then that could never happen to us. That's so, why I said that. So you, you can hold, come to the mic, I can't hear you. So you hold your, your se well, yourself collectively accountable for your own destiny, spirituality, and that of your family. That's what you're saying. I'm just, I'm just summarizing yeah, what you yes, just said. Uh -huh. That's right. All right, I, just want to make sure I, I understand I hold what you myself said. responsible for my family. The and spirituality that, and... Oh, right, right, exactly. All right. All right. Because that's who he has given it to us, to me, to the man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Very good, Chris. I appreciate that. Uh, Jesse, you want to make a statement? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. uh, uh, I think that... Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, on what this gentleman just said, yes, the father is responsible for uh, the upbringing of his children and setting example for his family uh, without the man in the house, which, you know, when, when I first joined Bond, I thought I was unique in that I had special problems. But then I come to Bond and I meet so many other men with the same kind of problems, just like me, that I had. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, but, but knowing these other men and understanding these other men like I do now, I understand that it's the same problem all men have. Let me, you know, I just had a question that come to my mind. If we all agree, and most of us agree that the churches have failed, right, in the black community? Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's because they don't know, or, I mean, why? Ma I haven't Malcolm really understood why. He said it in the beginning. Well, what were you that, that it's a, it's a, it's a game. It's they've they've incorporated politics I, into the churches. It's a business. It's no longer a greed. church. Yeah, it's greed. Ego. If, if the reason you're you're not on Sex. that particular radio station had nothing to do with whether or not you were teaching people. Uh, uh, about the principles of Jesus Christ, it had to do with you may awaken somebody and pull them away from that church. Thus, they don't have any money in their basket mm -hmm. for that Sunday. You see, if you pull, if you awaken too many people to what's real, the reality, that they begin to stand up and face things within themselves and take charge of their own lives and be responsible for yourself. And you start doing that, and you say, "Look, I don't need to go to church every day." I can do this without the minister. I go, and then when you make up your mind to go once in a while and fellowship, then they lose that. Every Sunday they turn on the lights and they get an electricity bill. They have no enough members to pay this bill. Let me ask you this, You Dad. see, so it becomes a business. I'll be to you in one minute. I, w I know that uh, you were sort of turned off from the church for a while. Was you turned off because of your father first or it, because of the church? It first? started with my father. It started father. with being forced as a child to go to church and stand up in front of people and read and quote scriptures and, and say stuff that I don't know. And, oh, that's cute. You don't know what you're saying. Um, I, I, I um, got baptized by mistake. Mm -hmm. One of my friends was afraid to go up into the pulpit. I turned around and said, Mom, you want me to walk up there with her? And my mother said, yes. I go up there, and next thing I know, they're dunking me under the water. <laughs> I had no idea to this day, you know, if I could take that back. And I look back and say, how could my mother be so stupid as to let me, an eight-year-old eight, eight year old child, I may even been younger than that, walk up there knowing that when they say the doors of the church are open and you're going to go up there and sit down and they're going to dunk you under your child under some water had no most okay. stupidest thing my parents could have done let me hear from you <laughs> we're, we're short on time make your statement quick i just like to comment because everybody's talking about um religion and and i believe there's only one god whether i mean i have been catholic i have been buddhist i have been christian i have been uh, you know, whatever I've been, look, it's in yourself to search out who you are in That's him. Right. There's only one him. There's not a whole bunch of, so everybody's agreeing that there is a God. There's only one God, and we need to understand that okay. and find out who we are in that one God. I appreciate that. You know, in closing, again, I want to invite you to come to the Bonds meeting. Our meetings are open to everyone. For more information, call 213 I mean, I'm sorry, 759 3844. That's 213 Seven five nine three eight four four. One thing I want to say, we all have a responsibility to find God for ourselves. We can't blame, especially adults, we can't blame someone else for not finding him. It's been a good meeting. Thank you guys for coming. What Appreciate it. Oh, it's a break. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going on break. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
What is Jesse Peterson talking about? Who speaks for black people? Bond, Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. Rebuilding the black community by rebuilding the black man. Meetings held every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Location, 2625 West Manchester Boulevard, Inglewood, California, 90305. For more information, call area code 213-759-3844. That's 759-3844. Bond, rebuilding the black community by rebuilding the black man. Welcome back to the program. We were talking about religious today. Half the church fell within the black community. And just before we went to break, you want to make a comment? Yeah, I, I did. It is a comment, you know, and you, I, what sparked it was you were talking a little bit earlier about whether the, I think whether the, the churches were intentionally mis, misleading right. people or keeping people away from the truth. And um, but here's, I just like to say what I think and maybe get people to respond to it that and, I'm, and I know there's always some exceptions like the, the Jim and Tammy Bakers, the people that are, you know, obviously just it's a business and they're getting money. But I think what I see is that, uh, and I have a lot of friends that are religious and, and go to church and stuff, but I, I, what I think is that the, for the most part, with some few exceptions, that the ministers, they don't, they don't really understand. They don't really have that, the, the right spirit and a deep understanding of, of what Christ taught. And if they don't have it, they can't pass it on. And it's, it's like, like the one lady was saying, that you go to an assembly meeting and they don't teach you there, but if you went to a math class and you had a math teacher and he, couldn't, he didn't know math and he couldn't add or anything and he was, he was trying to teach you, you, you couldn't learn because yeah. he just didn't have it. And I think that uh, that's the same situation, that the, the, it's just the blind leading the blind. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, on on the same note, uh, I I always wondered. There's people that go to the church. They're in the church for years. They're in the church for 40 and 50 years. And here comes someone graduates from high school and go to this one of these one of these uh, minister schools. What are Seminar. they called? Yeah. Seminary. 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 Seminary schools. <laughs> After four years, they go up in the pulpit and preach to these people that've been in the church for 40 years and have raised families, have uh, gone through business. They should, the, the people that have gone through life seem to me, I said, something's wrong. If a young guy like myself can go up and preach to a 60-year-old uh, man on, on how to live these principles that, that God taught, what happened to that 60-year-old man? Why don't he just go to the school for four years? And if, if that's what's going to get him into heaven. Yes. I, I never did understand that. And, and that's what makes it seem like just confirms what I thought that this yeah. is just a business. Yeah, you wonder how, how they go to church for, and, and preach and, and, and carry the Bible and, and quote scripture and their lives never change. They're still in the same rut that they, they started out. They started out, I go to church, they tell you I go to church and I know the word and, and, and to get better and to live my life. But they, they, they still don't have any money, they, they're up, up to here and hawk and, and uh, Nothing is, is right. The kids are all disarray and, and, and the, man, the husband and wife have problems. And you wonder, well, why are you going to church? What does that mean? What do you do? Just for a feeling, for a hype, you know, for a minute. What are you saying, Nona? <laughs> you looking Everybody. On the eye over there. <laughs> He's saying that this is going to get you into heaven. None of those things will get you into heaven if you know the word it tells you what will save you and have everlasting life, which is just simply acknowledging that your supreme being gave his only begotten son to suffer that cross for you. That he died, well, rose um, in the resurrection. Once you can see, this is um, too broad to just talk yes. on a natural, I'm still saying natural basis. We're all natural men here. It it's got to be from the no, inner I, I, it's, it's more than true. knowing. It's, it's, that's it's right. living right. the word. Yeah, I, I think the, the church is, see, it's not that, um, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the message, but see, it's, it's uh, something definitely wrong with the people delivering the message because 
First of all, I'd like everybody to just stop and ask yourself, why is it that when you go to your basic black church, it's it's so loud? Why does the minister have to scream and perform? And why does the music have to go on and on and on? Why can't he just talk quietly and peacefully? I know they say, you, you know, they're getting happy and you're getting happy, but most of the people sitting there, they, they don't have any idea of what can, can they I should be happy to, about. I mean, may I answer? Mm -hmm. Let me say this. Um, um, I thank God for the churches, and then I come right to you. Because if we did not have the churches, some people believed in the Bible and all that, we would be in a, a real mess. Because I realized that the church, it does help control somewhat. And, and not all churches, but if we didn't have it all, we'd really be messed up. Can I get you to make a quick comment because we're right at the end of the Okay. Show. Uh, I just wanted to uh, express. I came up in a church. My grandfather was a bishop of the Pentecostal. I argued all the time about the principle. The way I learned the true principle, which I, should I say, confirmed the principle that I had already felt and, and was arguing, was teaching sports. As I taught gymnastics, martial arts, and all the other things, it taught me that there's only one principle in the world, a universe principle. Whether you call him God or whatever, okay, he still is one being that you have to learn from within your own self. You don't need That's no right. book. You don't need no another person. Okay, you just need the, yourself. Thank you. Let's take one quick from you and we over. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, a lot of the one particular thing that Nona said that is misunderstood is confessing Christ in your heart and you'll be saved. And people believe that cut and dried like that, but there's some meaning beyond that that's right. misunderstood. When those same people who believe that they confess Christ in their life, that they are saved, they are not saved. Let me ask you that's real right. quick. Do that's you believe exactly that, the, right. that the church is failing or not? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, again, I want to go back to that same principle that we all have a responsibility to find him for ourselves. And we can't blame the churches. I mean, I, I don't know if they're doing the best they can or what they're doing, but we have a responsibility to find God for ourselves. Because when you shed this body, he's not going to ask you what did the preacher say. We have to find it for ourselves. <laughs> All right, I thank you for being with us. We're out of time again. Again, my office number is 213-759-3844. We're looking for people to be on the next taping, uh, November 5th, I believe. Call me and let's talk. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> you really hit on a good point there that you said that you have got to stand strong. It's the truth about themselves to understand what been wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way, I know we can find a way Stand up, stand up, stand up Thank you very much, I appreciate it.